Hi, everyone. My name is Jim Harmon, and I'm a senior Android engineer at Foot Locker. And today I'm going to talk about the best darn Android development tool you've never heard of. And that's Flipper from Facebook. My talk will be in three parts. The first part, I'll show a basic use case for Flipper and I'll demonstrate it. In the second part, I'll kind of give a broad overview of what Flipper actually is. And then in the third part, I'll show you how you can extend Flipper to create your own custom debugging tools. Okay, let's get started. First part, Flipper use case. Ernest Hemingway, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1954, said writing is editing. What does this mean? Well, it means you'll spend a little bit of time writing your initial thoughts, but then the rest of your time is editing, editing, editing. For me, programming is debugging, and I'm sure that's the way it is for you too. As developers, most of our time is spent debugging. We'll fix errors that we've either identified ourselves or have been provided by QA or maybe have even been identified in production. Debugging is an essential part of programming, and also for many developers, it's the most fun part. Every bug, every defect is a little bit of a puzzle, and we get to solve that puzzle. Here's a little sample app that we can use to show you what I mean. What this app does is it displays two images, image one, image two, and then we can clear the screen. So let's take a look at image one. I'll click on the image one button. And we see a pair of red Converse All-Stars. This is this was my favorite shoe growing up. Um, I work at Foot Locker, we sell shoes, so I get to see lots and lots of pictures of shoes. Okay. On this screen, we're seeing an image, we're seeing a title in bold, and we're seeing some text. Here I'm just using some random text, so I'm not violating any copyrights. Now let me click on the Image 2 button. That's not good. The app terminated, blew up, crashed. Well, what happened? Well, as you might guess, this app makes a network call get some data from the network, and then uses that to populate the UI. Now, when we debug a problem, sometimes it's a black box. We don't know what's happening internally. Now, in this case, it's more of a dim gray box because I wrote the networking code and I wrote the, the UI code. But I don't know exactly what went wrong. But I need to get this app working, so I've got to debug it. And fortunately, I've got a number of tools I can use to figure out what went wrong. Now, there are various external tools like Charles for looking at network calls, but I prefer to start with the tools that are closest to me, the tools that are within Android Studio. So I might look first at LogCat and see if I can tell what's happening, and then maybe I might look at the network profile. Now, I know you've used those tools and I've used those tools every day, and they're great tools, but they're maybe not the easiest tools to use they're maybe not perfectly suited for getting to the air as quickly as possible. One of my professors at University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign was uh, Professor Ralph Johnson. He was one of the authors of Design Patterns, which was a 1995 book that was one of the first books that really described what a design pattern is, so it became very well known in the industry. Professor Johnson had a saying went, solving any problem becomes trivial when examined with the right tool at the right level of detail. And that really stuck with me, that debugging became a lot easier if you were using the right tool and you were looking at the right thing. And I think that's one of the reasons that Flipper really was such an attractive tool for me. It allows you to do that. So let's try this again with Flipper. I fired up Flipper, and you can see it on the screen in front of me. And a couple things I'll point out on the left hand side is a list of controls. So for instance, this tells me that I'm uh, running off a particular device and I'm looking at a particular app, the quiz app. Um, it shows me a list of plugins and the plugins, think of uh, Flipper as a toolbox and the plugins are the individual tools. So I've got a crash reporter, something about logs, layout, network, and so on. We'll come back to those in a minute. I've also got some controls for taking screen snapshots and even screen recordings. Okay, so let's pull up the app and try this again. So I've got the app here. Let me try to display image one. That looks fine. Now let me display image two. I'll click on the image two button. A 
couple things happened. You'll notice that we got a sound to indicate that something had happened in the app, that it had crashed. And we also got a notification in the upper right hand corner. And now Flipper is showing us the crash reporter. And I can see that I've got a crash. If I click on that, I can see detail about the crash. A couple of very important things right here that I think are really cool. One is I didn't have to go to the tool. The tool actually came to me. So as soon as it identified an error, it notified me that an error existed and showed me a screen that allowed me to get access to the error immediately. So let me um, change the layout a little bit so we can see that. Now we can see that we got a fatal exception in main. We can see it was a Java null pointer exception, attempt to invoke a virtual method, um, get a string on, a, on an object reference, and then exactly where it blew up. Now nothing magic here. This is the same kind of information we would see in the logs. However, we're getting right to it. We don't have to search for it in the logs. We can see it immediately. Now if for some reason I do want to go to the logs, there's a button that uh, open in logs I can click on and it will take me to a second tool in uh, Flipper called the Logs tool. And this may look very familiar to you because it is the same output that we're getting in LogCat with a few differences. For instance, it's showing me uh, the different LogCat levels in different colors, which you may have already implemented that yourself, but kind of nice to have. And so if I need to see what is uh, before or after the crash, I can, I can do that pretty easily. Okay. Let me jump back to the crash reporter for a moment. Okay, A couple other things I want to point out. If I get too many crashes, I can use the uh, garbage can icon just to get rid of them. But this is, to me, this is really an example of what Ralph Johnson was talking about. Looking at the error, looking, looking at the problem at the right level of detail with the right tool. So this immediately shows me exactly what my error is, at least exactly what it is at least exactly what it is in terms of, of Android. I don't see any extraneous information. I just get the stack trace and I get the error message. That's it. Okay. Well, what did this really tell me? It told me that there was a null pointer exception in my code. I'm not sure exactly why I got that null pointer exception. It might be interesting to look at the network calls and see if there was a problem with those. So fortunately, there is a tool in Flipper called the Network Plugin. I can click on that. And now I see a screen where I'm actually going to see my network calls. So let me bring back the app. And let me click on the Image 1 button. And you can see now that I've got a network call. Let me make a little more screen real estate available to us. Okay. So I can see that at this particular time, I made a network call to the domain flipperguy.github.io. It was a get. The status was 200. The size was 374 bytes coming back and took 201 milliseconds. I'll click on that and I can see the request information, the request headers, the response headers, and then the response body. And you'll notice I've got a response body consisting of a description field, an image URL field and a title field. Okay. Now let me make let me bring the let me bring the app back for a moment and now let's try image two. Okay, let me go back to Flipper and open up the network plugin. And I can see that I've got two and I can see that I've got two network calls now. Let me get a little more real estate here. I can see that I've got the image one JSON and the image two JSON, and it did seem to work. So what's the problem? Well, let me click on it and look at the response body, and I can see that I got a description field and an image URL field, but I did not get the title field. Ah, hmm. Well, the API team promised me that the contract would consist of those three fields. I'm sure that's going to eventually happen, but uh, as of right now, it's not happening. So what am I going to do? Well, I'll file a ticket, and in the next sprint, maybe in two weeks, I'll be able to get this API back and it'll be working correctly. But that doesn't help me right now. I need to make sure that my app is working, even though the network request isn't following the contract properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a mock response body. Now, there's various ways to do this with external tools, but I'm going to use Flipper to do that. 
So I'll highlight the so I'll highlight the um, the uh, call that I want to mock, and then I will click on this mock button, and then I will copy my selected calls, and now I've copied that um, response body over. I'm going to modify it and add a title. Okay, and now I've actually created a mock for this. I'll close out the mock dialog, and now I'll bring back the app, and I'll try it again. Image one, that looks good. Let's try image two, and that worked. But you'll notice that the network request shows it in yellow, and that's to highlight the fact that this is not a real call, but it's a mock call. Let me get rid of the app. I'll click on that and let's take a look at the response body that's mocked and now I can see that that came back through. And now I can see that the title came back in the response and I get some information the response headers were mocked and the response body was mocked. And I can do some other really cool things with this. So for instance, what if I wanted to test to see what happens when I get a 500 response status back? Let me do that. I'll go back into the mocks and I'll change my 200 to a 500. I'll bring back the app, clear it, and try it again. Okay, so in this case my app did not blow up. It did make the correct call, but because I didn't get uh, any data back in this case, uh, I don't display an image. I want to show you one more plugin before we move on. Let me bring back the app. Okay, one of the things that's very important for us at FootLocker is making sure that the screens are flexible no matter what data we're getting from the API. So in this case, I want to see what would happen if I have a really long title. Sometimes shoes have long titles. So what are my options? Well, maybe I could uh, use my mocking, my network mocking, and return a very long title. But sometimes the field isn't directly coming from uh, the, the API. So it'd be nice if I could sort of directly change it. And it turns out I can with a plugin called the Layout plugin. So let me make a little room here on the screen. I'll select the Layout plugin, get rid of the right-hand panel, make a little room so that we can see Flipper and the app at the same time. Okay. So I've selected the layout plugin. Notice as I mouse over the Flipper talk activity, which is the activity that's actually showing on the screen right now, it, it's all in blue. What it's doing is it's highlighting everything that I've highlighted in the layout hierarchy here on the left-hand side. So let me open up all my child elements. I'll expand them all. And now I can click through these various view elements, and you'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen on the app, uh, the view I'm selecting is being highlighted, so I can tell exactly what I'm working with. Okay, let me select the title view, and now I will get my properties window back, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and find the text in the title view, and I'm going to modify this. Oops. High top basketball shoes. Okay. And now on the right hand side in the app, I can see that the title was automatically modified uh, in real time so that I can see what the effect of having an extra long title would be. Um, and this is really an amazing capability. So it's kind of real time editing of the properties in the view and they immediately respond in the app. You know, we've got similar things to this in the Layout Inspector, the Layout tool in Android Studio, but that's not really at runtime. This is. So pretty amazing. I've showed this feature to experienced devs, uh, battle-hardened, lots of experience. Uh, they see this and they burst into tears and 
curse the stars that they weren't aware of uh, this tool throughout their careers. So I'm, of course, exaggerating a little bit, but my point is that there are certain times this can be really useful as you're building out your UI and testing it for various kinds of data that you might get back. Okay, uh, next we'll move to part two, where we'll kind of see a broad overview of, of Flipper. I'll explain a little bit more about what it is and uh, you know some of the additional capabilities that it has that I won't demonstrate, but I'll at least let you know about. Part two, Flipper overview. So let's start out by talking a little bit about what Flipper is. And we'll do that by going to the website first. So let's go to fbflipper.com. And there are a few points I want to make here. One is that Flipper is from Facebook, an enormous organization with lots of resources. There are multiple full-time developers working on Flipper. Also, there are hundreds and hundreds of Android developers inside of Facebook that are using Flipper every day, which helps move it along. Another point I'll make is that we can download a Mac, Linux, or Windows version of Flipper. So Flipper itself is cross-platform. And uh, another point I'll make is that it is a cross-platform debugging tool as well. So what I mean by that is you can use it to debug uh, iOS apps, Android apps, or React Native apps. So just to summarize, Flipper is a desktop application, cross-platform itself, that is used to debug cross-platform mobile apps. Also, Flipper is an Electron app. What does that mean? Let's jump over to the Electron uh, website for a moment at electronjs.org and talk a little bit about this. Electron is a framework for developing desktop applications. It's not part of Facebook, so it's an independent framework. You build Electron apps using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So this is a little bit different for us as Android developers. And if you actually want to modify Flipper, it is a different, uh, different uh, stack than the one we're used to in Android. Now, you may have not worked with Electron before, but you've probably worked with Electron apps. So here's a list of some of the big ones. Visual Studio Code, the Facebook Messenger, the Slack client, um, in Figma, so uh, if you're using Figma for UI, UX design, Figma itself is an Electron app. So, again, a very popular framework. Flipper is also open source. So let's jump back to the Flipper uh, website for a moment and click on the little GitHub icon. And that'll take us to the open source repository for Flipper, which is part of uh, the Facebook user. And we can see that Flipper is a repository within the Facebook user account. So what does this mean for us? Well, it's open source, so we can look at any of the source, the source code and see what's actually happening, and we can make changes. Another important thing is it's open source and open license. In other words, it's free. We don't have to pay for it. Uh, it's not a commercial product. It's provided uh, by Facebook for free. And finally, uh, it is possible for individuals or companies to make changes to Facebook and actually submit them as pull requests and Facebook may accept them or not accept them, but it is something where the larger user community can actually contribute to Facebook. I've actually contributed myself by providing some PRs related to the network plugins, specifically the uh, parts of the mocking feature. Let's go back to the Flipper website. Another thing about Flipper is all the plugins that we get right out of the box. Let's go back to the Facebook site. Let's go back to the Flipper site for a moment. And underneath Features and Plugins, I can see various plugins that are available. And some of the ones that we haven't looked at that are very useful are images. So if you're using Fresco, for instance, uh, when your app downs when your app downloads an image, you can actually see inside Flipper information on each of the images that have been downloaded and whether they've come from memory, from cache, or whether they've been downloaded from the internet, what size they are, various things like that. Also, another very useful one is the shared preference view. So we have shared preferences in Android, and we can see those in the shared preference XML file or various XML files. But rather than having to go through Android Studio to see those, 
we can actually look at those directly using a Flipper plugin, and we can actually modify them as well. And finally, I want to talk about the third-party plugins. Let me jump back to Flipper. And one of the icons on the left-hand side is the Plugin Manager. If I click on that and go to Install Plugins, I can actually see a list of various third-party plugins. So these are plugins that were developed by individuals or companies who are not part of Facebook directly, and they're providing a third-party plugin that you can use. So for instance, ADB plugin is one that I've used before, and that actually will issue ADB commands through the Flipper interface rather than having to go to the command line, for example. And as you can see, there are many others. And growing all the time. Part three, custom plugins. As I said before, Flipper is an open source product. So one of the really cool things about it is that you can extend it and you can create your own plugins. So this diagram shows the Flipper plugin architecture. On the left is the desktop client, uh, the Flipper plugin base code, um, and then the custom code for an individual plugin. And on the right is the Android app, and that consists of a Flipper plugin base class and then a subclass for each of the various plugins. Um, the desktop client is connected to the Android app through a WebSocket, and messages can be sent back and forth. So in this case, um, the desktop client and the Android app are both peers. Either one can receive a message at any time or send a message at any time. Okay, I've talked in general about the ability to create custom plugins, but now let's look at a specific plugin. So we can see uh, Flipper before us on the screen. I'm going to look at a plugin called the A11Y Helper. A11Y is the shorthand for accessibility, so this is the accessibility helper. And you can see basically it looks like just a bunch of buttons, and for the most part that's what this is. It's a bunch of toggles to turn features on or off related to accessibility. Okay. Accessibility is very important for us at Foot Locker. To be honest, we also recognize that it's a bit of a pain to, to do. Um, one of the things that we have to use is talk back to see if um, the um, screen readers are properly reading all the view elements. And that can be a pain. I don't know if you've ever had to turn talk back on and you kind of use two fingers and hold two buttons down for three seconds to turn it on and then reverse that to, to turn it off. But it can be a little bit of a pain. Another thing we have to do is uh, a lot more screen recordings because uh, of the audio it's necessary for a QA to be able to see the screen. Or if there's a problem with it, it's oftentimes necessary to really see a, a video to see what the problem is. And again, doing screen recordings can be a little tough as well. So let's just focus first on turning talk back on and off. It would be really nice if we didn't have to go through the manual process of doing that. So you can see here at the top of the screen, I've got a button called talk back on and another button called talk back off. Let me open up a little screen real estate so we can see the, uh, the app. Okay, so now I can see the app, and the app is not in talkback mode. So if I click on a button, I don't hear anything. Now let me turn it on. Talkback on. Quiz app debug. Hopefully you heard that. Um, now talkback is on. Image two, button. Clear, button. Converse, all star. I can use my swipe commands. I can use my finger swipe commands to move around the app and check out TalkBack. Now I need to turn it off. Well, instead of going through the shortcut where I have to uh, press the buttons on the phone, I can simply click. TalkBack off. And now TalkBack is off. Let me turn it on again. TalkBack on. Quiz app debug. Volume down. Volume down. So you can see that I can use my volume up and down buttons to change the volume again without having to touch the device. So this was really huge for us. Now I know if you're anything like me, none of this means anything until you can see the code. So let's jump into the code and check out this and see what's actually going on here. Okay, here I'm looking at an index.tsx file, which is a TypeScript file. It's really a more, um, it's really a more strongly typed form of JavaScript. And a couple of things I want to show you. One is that I need to have a function called plugin that takes a plugin client. So on the, on the desktop side, this is what I use to talk to the app on the client side. Okay. 
And then I also need another function which will draw the UI for me. And that's a function called component. And without going into HTML uh, too heavily, let me highlight this line here, line 214, which is a button, as you can see. And the, the label for the button is talk back on. And then the on click for the button is this talk back on method. Okay. Let me find that method. TalkBackOn calls a TalkBackOn command method. Let me jump to that. And then you can see that basically we're just issuing something called settings. What you're not seeing is that there's an ADB shell command before this. And this is actually the ADB shell command to turn TalkBackOn. I actually got this idea from a post by Victoria Ganda, which... Um, talked about how to turn talk back on and off through ADB commands again rather than going through rather than rather than doing that manually and these ADB commands as you can see in Victoria's tweet uh, can be issued from the command line but we really wanted to take it a step further and avoid having to even do that so now you can so now we can just tie it to that button now in this case we actually didn't communicate directly with the plug-in on the Android device, but let me show you that. So I'm going to jump back for a moment to the volume controls. So here's the line that does volume down. You can see we've got a label for volume down, and then we've got a click listener for that called volume down. And what's interesting here is that my volume down function issues a client send command. And all it does is it sends a text string called volume down to the um, app. Now let me pull up the app source code. Okay, a couple things here. This is Kotlin. I've created an accessibility flipper plugin really by just extending the base flipper plugin. And then I have to override a few methods, one of which is onConnect. And then in onConnect, I define a number of connection methods. Here's connection receive for volume up and volume down. Literally those strings. And then for each of those, I have some Kotlin code that actually talks to the uh, audio manager and lowers or raises the volume. Again, the connection here is the names of those messages, volume down and volume up. Let me jump back over to the TypeScript side and you can see the volume down message and the volume up message. So just very cool. I'm able to go back and forth that way, sending messages. And I could have sent a message from the Android app as well. Okay, let me get back to Flipper. Okay, let me get back to Flipper here. Um, some of the other things that I could do is I could uh, actually turn touch on and touch off. So if I do that, I'll turn talk back on. Talk back on. Quiz app debug. And now you can see it's a little light, but you can see as I'm moving my finger, I actually see the touch point. So I'm moving my finger on the screen right now. Another thing I can do is show the layout bounds. That's something that's sometimes useful as well. Okay, And now we can see that the layout bounds are all highlighted properly, and I can turn that off. Okay, So that's just a quick demo of a, of a fairly simple uh, plugin. And I think the... And not only is it a simple plugin, but it was pretty simple to code. I do want to say a little bit more about the accessibility plugin. This is a completely custom plugin that I wrote, but it's not really complete. There's some other things I can do with it. For instance, you can see on the screen that I've got some buttons for screen recording, starting a recording, stopping it, saving it. But those are grayed out because they're not, they're not done yet. Well, what about other ideas for plugins? Certainly one of the things you could do is create plugins related to analytics logging. So uh, oftentimes analytics packages write to the log during debugging, and you could actually intercept those messages and display them in a better format than you might see in something like Logcat. 
Another idea is test logins. So for instance, if there's a lot of test data sign-ins that you need to uh, get you to a particular state in the app, you could actually create a plugin that would list a number of sign-ins that you could uh, then assign to a button and automatically get logged into the app so that you don't have to remember those things. Another idea is for debug settings and feature flags. So oftentimes apps have kind of a hidden screen during debugging that you can use to turn settings on and off, or, or maybe you use feature flags quite a bit and you'd like to be able to turn those on easily rather than having to go to some kind of hidden debug screen. Well, I hope I've gotten you excited about using Flipper and uh, look forward to hearing how uh, you're using it. Uh, that concludes my talk. Um, if you'd like to reach out to me, uh, you can uh, contact me at my email address or uh, feel free to connect with me at, uh, at LinkedIn.